back to the main story. Uh, Superman and Wonder Woman fly back to Metropolis, and it too is just devastated, except for the Daily Planet. Uh, Black Canary, or Green Canary, I guess at this point, Green Canary. has pretty much protected the building, which is a bubble. Well, I call her Black Lantern, but there's already Black Lanterns out there. Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, so she's shielded, like, everyone from the blast and from the radiation. So, uh, and then Superman hears someone calling him, and it's Lex Luthor. He's in, like, one of his power suits. Him and his sister are down in the room. She's like, oh, God, now there's this guy. So he, he goes down to confront him, but Luthor's like, hey, I don't want any trouble. Just... Look right? what There's no before. money for Lex Luthor to make. If the whole world is zombies, zombies don't use money. Well, it's well, not necessarily the money that keeps Luthor going. It's his fundamental opposition to what Superman stands for. Like, if humanity comes to rely on, like, some otherworldly alien savior, then it will cease to evolve or progress further as a species. But at this point, okay, it's I'm the end sure of the world. Because you've read this comic and I haven't. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I feel like somewhere deep down I'm right. And that part of the motivation is Lex Luthor doesn't make any money <laughs> if the whole world is zombies. No, he's already got more than enough money. He's about as rich as Bruce Wayne. He's got it stashed away. I mean, does that stop anybody? Eh, depends on who you ask. But anyway, at this point, he's like, hey, I'll do whatever you want. Whatever, whatever you think you is think best, because I got nothing right now. And so they set to work. Uh, they disable or destroy, like, the different satellites around the world. They, like, anything that could transmit a signal of the anti-life equation. And then they start trying to round up the survivors, the small number of them that there are, because it's actually hasn't even been a day, hasn't even been like a few hours actually in story, and more like at least three quarters of the world, if not more, is infected. So it's a losing game of Plague Inc. right there. You you just keep hitting a fast forward yeah. button, and then you're like, no, why did I do that? They try to play it at regular speed, you know? You're just like, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if you've it's, ever uh, it's that, like, app where you're, you're like, a type of disease and you kill the world. Anyway. Yeah, this one would definitely win. Uh, so, and they're starting to set up sanctuaries. Uh, Mara has, by this point, gone to Paradise Island, and she's been staying with the Amazon since her whole kingdom's been destroyed, and she's a woman, so they're not going to turn her away. And Diana goes back to Paradise Island. She's like, okay, we have to let other people here. We've got, it's literally all or nothing, so, and th this is what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to protect mankind or whatever. And so what her and some of the other heroes, Superman, like some of the strong ones, they lift up parts of the ground, like underneath, and Paradise Island becomes sort of like about as large as a state, I, I guess. That's like the best way I can describe it. So it can accommodate a lot more people now. And so Paradise Continent... Can you imagine making that case to the Amazons, though? They're already like... We're not that picky. All you have to do is be a woman and have skill in battle and you can stay here. And you want us to, like, lower the bar further than that? Well, at this point, there's barely anyone left on the planet. And so they've got that. And Damian Wayne, Batman now, he's got, like, a little bat suit on. He goes to Gotham with with Green Arrow and Black Canary, and they go to po to find Poison Ivy, who's basically set up a sanctuary of her own, like she's got her vines and everything there, keeping all the infected out. And they go to her and they're able to like negotiate with her and Ivy to allow some of the survivors to stay with her temporarily while they set up something. 
And so the plan is, and Superman's pretty against this, is that they're starting to build arcs, like these giant ships that will take everyone out into space and hopefully towards a better planet that they can just start over at. And, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, Superman, who's from another planet, who found refuge on our planet, is against Earthlings finding refuge on another planet? Well, he doesn't want to give up the battle. It's more like that. He doesn't want to give up on, yeah. his, on his adopted home world. That makes way more sense than the way my brain just framed the whole thing, yeah, right? So, so. Yeah, so he's arguing with Lex about this as whether or not this is the right move. He's like, look, trust me, I'm the smartest guy on earth. I, I wait a minute, Batman is dead, right? He is, <laughs> I am the smartest guy on earth. And yeah. And there's even a point where Superman's just so frustrated. He's like, man, you've lost, you've basically lost two whole planets in your life. That's got, during your lifetime, that's got to suck for you. And Lois just comes over and decks him. He's like, hey, we don't need you to talk. We just need you for your mind to think. We don't need your I... personality. Just build the things. And she's like, uh, violence is never the answer because Don and Damien are watching. He's like, it's going to work to me. And so uh, like a week or so passes and... They've made progress, they've built the arcs, and they're starting to get all the survivors together so that they can go off into space. But of course, of course it's just a brief little respite, and more trouble arrives in the form of an infected Martian Manhunter. No! Yeah, he comes to the <laughs> fortress, and he just starts tearing things up. Uh, he infects the Flash. Yeah, that's something else I forgot to mention. Uh, the flashes were, the Flash and Kid Flash uh, were, they had been kept hidden away. Like Batman had gotten in touch with them before contacting Superman. He's like, go hide somewhere because if you get infected, barricade then yourself because you're infected. Super speeds to bite everyone in the world. Exactly. They could bite them, they could scratch them, they could kill them, they could spread the infection at a monumental pace. And at this point, yeah, and by actually, the, something else I forgot to mention, uh, they were given special contact lenses so that they could use their super speed, run around, and not get infected by looking at a screen. Superman, mm -hmm. him, Superman himself, ever since he figured out, like, what the problem was, he had been, he had switched his vision to X-ray at all times until, like, they had taken care of, like, the satellites and everything. That sounds so depressing. Can you imagine, like, having super speed and being in a fly way up above everybody and all you're seeing is, like, a bunch of skeletons everywhere? It's I guess that would help keep things in perspective, though. Like, if you don't mm -hmm. succeed, for real, for real, everybody's just going to be rage skeletons. Yeah, but he... Turns out, but like I say, he turns out the vision so that he doesn't see the the rage skeletons, as you call them. But now he just sees basically everyone else's skeletons. So all he sees is death, no matter how he how he switches his vision. But anyway, like I said, at this point, uh, Martian Manhunter is infected. He kills Lex Luthor. He like rips. He like flies through him. Uh, he he scratches Flash, who just takes off. No. Yeah, and uh, Firestorm eventually kills Martian Manhunter. He, like, brings up fire, which is his weakness, and he kills him. But by this point, the Flash is running around the world and infecting pretty much everyone else who isn't at a sanctuary. So many other people are getting infected. The numbers are just rising. And Wally, well, Wally's, what's he want? Kid Flash, he wants to try and stop him. But Superman's like, no, if you get infected too, then we're done we're all set i will catch i will take care of him like and so he flies out and he's talking to cyborg on his comms and he's like flash is dead right when you get infected there's no coming back he i'm not actually killing him he's already dead and he's basically like yeah man 
You don't have to hold back. But how are you going to catch him? You're fast, but you're not as fast as him. And he's like, I don't have to catch up to him. I just have to be where he's going to be. So he flies down and he basically he floats in his he stands in his path and he and his whole and Flash's body like comes apart when the two meet. So he destroys his body. However, he's running so fast that two of Flash's fingers get stuck in Superman's abdomen. So there's, there's he's almost infected. knocked over. I don't think he, it was in the screen, but I just almost knocked over my wine glass, being like, I have to hold my own, like. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> Superman, Superman is infected now. Uh, he realizes there's not a lot of time left, so he goes back to the fortress. He says goodbye to his wife, to his family, and he flies up into space. And he wants to get as far away as he can, but it's too late, and the infection overtakes him as he gets into the atmosphere, just out of the atmosphere. So, Earth's greatest hero is now their biggest threat. No. Mm -hmm. Over on Paradise Island, things are much better. Now, you know about like Wonder Woman's uh, history and whatnot, right? For the most part, like how yeah, Paradise yeah. Island separated from man's world, can't be found on a map or whatever. Well, since the other heroes expanded <laughs> the perimeter of Paradise Island, it broke the enchantment or whatever that was keeping it hidden. So now other people can find it, including the infected zombies, and in particular, an infected Aquaman, who is controlling at this point the Kraken? No. Yeah. So things are getting pretty bad all over. All right. Uh, last issue. It's been a pretty long one, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. If it gets too long, we'll just split it into two episodes, <laughs> and then people will have to see our faces combined like this <laughs> twice. <laughs> I got no complaints. They're so pretty anyway. good looking faces, so. Yeah, I think I'm a relatively good. handsome guy. You're a pretty good looking woman. I think you're a pretty good looking man, so I, I was more talking about you, but. Thank you very much. That's cool. All right, so by this point, Superman is now infected, and there's a scene at the beginning of the issue where people look up at the sky, they see him flying, and they see hope because he's like their greatest hero and everything. But then he flies into like the Empire State Building and just brings it crashing down and starts killing people. And they're like, oh god, like there is no hope now. Uh, so the remaining heroes are trying to figure out a plan to deal with an infected Superman. And Damian Wayne, the new Batman, and Wonder Woman both have a plan to deal with this. Wonder Woman has the sword of Athena, which is, oh, out of line. Ah. <laughs> Do you have to make it the rest of the video? I... That should make it, that should be enough. Okay, 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 okay. I'll slow and, down. I'll slow <laughs> down. All right. So she's got the, her magic sword, and Superman is weak against magic. And he's also weak against kryptonite, which uh, Batman has, like, in his belt. Mm he's -hmm. like, hey, if we can combine the two, like, make, like, a kryptonite magic sword, it might be something that we can use against him. And Green Arrow, he just kind of scoffs at this because Batman, of course, he's got a, a plan to potentially kill his friends and whatnot. And I mean, aren't there uh, like whole storylines around this? It's like yeah. Batman planned to kill us all, and he thought he was unhackable, but somebody hacked it. Yep, that was Tower of Babel. That's yeah, that's the one we we just yeah. talked about this. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, Damien turns to Green Arrow and he's like, uh, actually, he didn't have a contingency plan for you. Oh. 
It's like, what do you mean he didn't have a plan for me? He's like, and Dunn is like, ah, don't feel bad, Ollie. He's like, I can be an, I can be a threat. Like, pouts, <laughs> holds his hand. He's like, I know you can, honey. I know. Because, like, 25% of Dinah's job is soothing Ollie's ego sometimes. <laughs> Pretty much. So, uh, actually, the three of them, uh, Wonder Woman, uh, Green Arrow, Green Canary, they go over to Themyscira, where they basically forge the, crypt, the, green, the kryptonite magic sword. And, like I mentioned before, Aquaman is infected, and he's controlling a whole horde of zombified Atlanteans and he's controlling the Kraken. This is where he makes his move and comes out of the sea. It's basically like made a big typhoon or tidal wave or whatever. Right. He's like, everybody makes fun of Aquaman. Well, look at me now. I got a crack. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a very underrated character until like more recently. I agree. That is, that is, one, that is one thing that the new 52 did for him. They they made Aquaman cool again. Right. Because, like, seriously, we've explored a higher percentage of, like, our solar system than our oceans. Yeah. Are you discount the character that's, like, the master of the oceans? What yeah, he runs, like, 70% of the, the planet. Same. Right? Right? He runs 70% of the planet. He's super strong, super fast. He can summon the Kraken. He's bulletproof. He can breathe under and above water. Right, like Aquaman a lot going for him. is our worst nightmare. Yeah, so like I said, at this point, he's he's riding the Kraken, he's made a big tidal wave, he's about to invade, and all of a sudden, he's hit in the eye with an arrow, and he drops down dead. So his hold over the Kraken, say, uh, gone now. And you see Green Arrow with like his bow, like he just shot an arrow, and he's like, <laughs> Batman says, I'm not a threat. I just shot an arrow <laughs> two miles through a storm into the eye of the King of Atlantis while he was controlling a Kraken. Screw you, Batman. Meanwhile, I'm sure Black Canary is just like, oh, he's going to take all the wrong lessons away from this. All the wrong lessons. What lessons? He basically <laughs> vindicated himself as a threat. Vindication! Vindication! <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's where the gift should go. Yes. <laughs> so they make the sword and the the invading zombies are getting on to Paradise Island, to Themyscira, and the Amazons have decided to basically hold the line until the rest of humanity can get, the survivors that they have can get into the Ark and go up into into space they hadn't planned on leaving the planet because they're like, like, like I said, they're the source of like humanity's guardians or whatever. So they're staying to make sure whoever's left gets out safe. They send Wonder Girl off. They give her like her, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. not for real, for real, know. but you know, at, at the yeah. Superman celebration every year, I'm just saying people stop me on the street and go, Hey, Wonder Girl. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Hippolyta basically gives her like a tiara or whatever, sends her off to go with humanity, and Mara Wait, goes with her. Wonder Girl or Cassie Sandsmark Wonder Girl? Uh, Cassie Sandsmark Wonder Girl. Okay, that's me. That's me. Vindication <laughs> again. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> she sends her off to go with the Ark. Uh, Mara goes with them as well because her kingdom's basically destroyed. She can just go wherever there's water. So she can start over. And so it's basically a fight to the death. Uh, the Amazon's last stand as the first arc goes up into the air. Now, conversely, on the other side of the planet, other members of the League are trying to take care of Superman as they get the other arc launched and try to get the other two moving far enough away so that he can't catch up to them. So you got Wonder Woman, she's got the, the new sword, and you got Cyborg, Green Lantern, I think one or two others maybe. And something that she does actually, she makes like a big construct of a megaphone and she just screams into it at Superman. Did, did and, you uh, just hear a clang noise? 
I did. That was my ring hitting my wine glass. <laughs> but whatever, that's my that's my recording version of the sonic scream. Completely there you go. Accidental. Whatever works. Whatever works. <laughs> yeah, so Wonder Woman comes in. She actually cuts off one of Superman's arms with her sword and then stabs him in the abdomen. But or like through the stomach or something, but then Superman punches through Wonder Woman. No. And pulls a sword out and flies up into space to catch up with the arcs. She tried so hard and got so far. And it didn't even matter. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, she gives Green Canary the sword, tells her to take Cyborg and go after him, because at this point she's infected, she's gonna be overtaken by the virus, but Cyborg's like, hey, I'm staying here. I was never gonna go up with you guys. I'm, I was patient zero. I'm the one who it started with. I'm not going with you. I'm staying here. I'm like fair enough. And so she flies away with the sword to try and catch up to Superman. And John and Lois are up in like the other arc, and they see him coming. Well, John can see him. Comes like he's on his way, and so he goes out like he takes off his jacket. You see like his. Uh, Superboy costume underneath. And he says, he basically tells Damien, like, hey, you're going to be a great Batman, and says goodbye to his mom, just in case. And he flies out, and he hits Superman head on, and it stuns Superman. And, and John breaks his arm in the process. But it's enough for Green Canary to catch up and try to fight back. But you laugh every time you say Green Canary, like. Yeah. But she's overpowered until the cavalry shows up in the form of the entire Green Lantern Corps. Who show right, up? I've been wondering where they are this whole time, like. Right to the party as usual. As usual. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but really, I think it was more so. It was about uh, quarantining, like, the rest of the galaxy so that this virus wouldn't spread elsewhere. At least that's my guess. But still, it's kind of apropos because it's what they do. They're never around for any of the big, like, earth-shattering events. Uh, Guy Gardner, who's another Green Lantern, he's actually he's like, like, like... favorite Green Lantern. <laughs> he's, like, He's like, geez, Don, I leave her for a month. What the hell's going on here? He's just like, I will kill you if you don't stop <laughs> me. Because he doesn't want to deal with any of his crap. He's like, hey, I'm watching my planet die right in front of me. This humor is my only coping method. So really, this is hitting him about as hard as everyone else. Mm -hmm. But Superman realizes, like, he might be a zombie, but he can also still think a bit and basically about how to kill or how to infect as many as possible. And he knows that he's outnumbered and outgunned at this point, especially while he's missing an arm. So what he does, he flies off, the other lanterns get saved, but then like the doc realizes that he's flying into the sun. And what he starts doing is absorbing its radiation, like he's feeding off of the sun and slowly changing like he's gonna change the state of the sun into like a red giant or whatever, and then eventually it'll extinguish and kill the rest of the life in <laughs> that particular universe. That would make him the like DC zombie version with the most kills. It would, yeah. So uh, yeah, they're like we. He's gonna be staying there. Like we'll we'll monitor the situation. But for now, we got to get the rest of these survivors out of here. So the Green Lantern Corps escorts the Arcs out. They take John back onto the ship. Uh, Green Canary goes on. Like, they fly off. Back on Earth, uh, you see Wonder Woman is infected and wrapped up in the Lasso of Truth. Cyborg is holding on to it. A little more wine up the nose. I think this one's just regular allergies, but if you want to take credit, you can. <laughs> no, Red Robin's I've, pants. <laughs> I've been a bit sniffing myself. It's November. We're allowed. We're allowed. <laughs> yeah, so 
he's got Wonder Woman wrapped in the lasso, and she's like struggling, yelling, trying to get out. He's like, the lasso compels you to be truthful. Like, do do you have a consciousness? Can you understand me? And then she stops struggling. She talks like, we have a voice. So the virus or whatever, it has sentience to some extent. And he's like, is there a cure? And she says, yes, there is. And he's like, what is it? And she tries to struggle, but he tightens the lasso. He's like, what is it? And he's like, the cure is you. You are the start, you can end it. You are the alpha and the omega, or it started with you, you can end it. And, just, and he's like, oh crap, I gotta tell everyone. But before he can do that, uh, Wonder Woman like comes in and just decapitates him. Like he comes in, clothes lines his head off and you see his head like sort of bounce away. Oh, that's the worst. When you're like, okay, here's the break. And then like, I'm, I'm, I'm too drunk to verbalize this, but you know, like when you think you've got the answer in the story, but then the person who has the answer can't deliver the, the answer. I'm sure there's a literary. She can't get the information out. Like she rips his head off and throws it all away, throws it away. So they don't know that there was a cure and that the cure is Cyborg himself somehow. I'm sure they elaborate that in the sequel as well. But anyway, to wrap up the story. The rest of humanity is traveling around. They find a new planet, which they call Earth 2, which is a little reference to like the uh. to the actual Earth 2 in the multiverse or whatever. Uh, Lois Lane, that we find out, has been the one narrating, and she basically wraps up saying, hopefully we can start over and things will be better here and something like this never happens again. And that's basically it. That was deceased. Oh. Wow. That's that's so much. Also, I have this much wine left. <laughs> I saved I it. Well, not anymore. So I'm gonna say if I'm gonna say any more dumb stuff on this recording, we gotta make it fast. <laughs> All right. Anyway, what'd you think of the story? I know I basically just summarized the key points of it, but I mean, it's a, I like, I enjoyed it overall. It had great artwork. Uh, the characters were well written and definitely worth a read on your own if you get a chance. If I get a chance, I will. Like, that's the thing about comics is there's so much out there that's been so good, which mm -hmm. again, let me be bitter about the fact that I read the like pre soft reboot mm -hmm. new 52 teen titans because that wasted time <laughs> yeah but no for deceased one i'm super glad that it was so different from like the darkest night black lanterns because mm -hmm. i have read some of that and you got to give me like a new perspective on all this mm -hmm. i just saw the recording of me and my nose is so red <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm a little further back from the screen, so I can't quite tell. Okay, good, 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 because maybe that maybe our viewers can't see it either. So for the viewers at home, my nose is super red, <laughs> super red. <laughs> but no, this is like super, super great. It's like a. You said this is before Black Lanterns, right? Uh, this. This particular story is like outside the standard continuity that they've got going on. I'm sure like in that universe or whatever, they came across Black Lanterns at one point. But this is like post rebirth. Uh, like I said, like 2018, 2019 generic continuity. Yeah, well, that's still super cool. And especially if it was written after like trying to take on like a zombie version of anything after the black lan the black lantern like darkest night event is super ambitious and if it's halfway as good as you just narrated it to me then i should totally read it definitely well, I mean, you've got well i think part of it came from like the title i mean deceased deceased someone right. just at uh dc was like hey dc's dc someone run with it <laughs> 
Yep. Yep. But I think I like mean, Tom Taylor just had a, a story to tell and the title just worked. Yeah. Well, Greg, thank you so much for appearing on our show again. Okay, always happy to be here. Your willingness to get drunk and then apply your vast knowledge. <laughs> we always appreciate that. Hey, anytime. We'll definitely have to do a identity crisis sometime. Right? I'm so glad. Hold on, hold on. Remember from the very beginning, if we break this into two episodes, then from the previous episode, how Crayley has this handy dandy. Now the question is if I can read my handwriting. <laughs> right? <laughs> identity. Oh boy, I hope I can read this later. Crisis with Greg. I just spelled your name G-R-G-E. Let's try this again. G-R-E-G. <laughs> there we go. All right. Well, Greg, you have a great night. Thank hey, you so hey, much hey, for hey, appearing hey, on Phoenix Sisters Cosplays episode of Drunk Comics. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> well, you definitely got the drunk part now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> By the way, my cup has this like unicorn spiral design. Nice. Right. Because you gotta get drunk, you'll be fancy while doing it. Fancy drunk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you. And to our viewers, make sure to like and subscribe or whatever I'm supposed to ask you to do. At the Keep end on of following. Right, right, right. <laughs> Good right. night and bye. Thank you.